There are questions surrounding the authenticity of this photo of a recent Kamala Harris campaign rally. Questions about how big the crowd actually was are being asked after Donald Trump claimed that this photo was, quote, AI'd. It's now a verb, AI'd. Okay, tech expert Carmi Levy joins us now with more Carmi experts. As Jeff just said, weighing in. What do you say about this? And is there a way to truly tell if this photo or any photo has been AI doctored? Uh, there are usually tells when a photo has been created using synthetic methods like AI. Uh, so you can see repeating patterns. You can see things that don't look quite right. Uh, for example, hands and fingers appendages might be off a little bit, lighting and shadowing not quite there. Kind of inconsistencies that we call them tells. Uh, and there are none of those on evidence here in this particular photo. In fact, forensic analysis from uh, professors, researchers who specialize in this, shows that there's no evidence at all, uh, in fact, that this was uh, AI created. In photography, of course, professional photo photos like this one was, are often edited slightly uh, before they're distributed. So in this particular case, you would have had some adjustments for lighting, for contrast and things like that. I'm a photographer in my spare time. I do this all the time as well in Lightroom and Photoshop. That does not mean that it was synthetically created. And in this case, this photo is, le is as legit as they come. All right, but questions have been asked or been raised, Carmi, and I think one of the questions we need to talk about is the implications here when it comes to the U.S. election or, or any election and whether or not in this era of AI voters can truly believe in anything that they're seeing. The implications are absolutely huge, Jeff, because if you don't believe what you're seeing, that can, of course, influence your behaviors going forward. So we're seeing kind of two types of, of misinformation here. One is the use of synthetically created imagery, so AI-generated photos, uh, as well as videos and audio clips and other forms of multimedia uh, to spread misinformation. And we're also seeing uh, legitimate imagery be questioned as AI generated, as is the case here. And so you look at an image and you're like, is it true? Is it not? Not sure. And then, of course, on social media, that tends to amplify it. So uh, a fake image can be spread around the world virally very quickly uh, using social media. And as we know, the companies like X uh, and Facebook and others have dialed back their online safety and moderation teams, uh, and they've also dialed up the algorithm. So uh, it, social media basically throws fuel on the fire if they there is uh, some misinformation being spread, uh, it amplifies that. And of course, by the time the truth comes out, most of us have already moved on to something else. Mm -hmm. All right. Still with AI, the union representing Hollywood actors have just struck a deal for advertisers to replicate actors' voices using AI. How will this work, Carmi? And could we see other industries do the same? Uh, this is really an echo of what happened last year with the Hollywood writers and actors strike. Of course, then the creative, uh, you know, the, the talent were very concerned about studios using their likeness as they wish without compensating them with compensating them and without them having control. So what this does, it's a deal with Narrative, which is an online talent platform. Uh, voice actors uh, are essentially now allowed to set a price for their digital likeness so that if an advertiser wants to use a digital or AI created version of their voice, they're going to have to negotiate a price for it. And they're also going to have to get permission every single time they use it in every new ad. So it returns control back to the talent and ensures we can't just replace humans with technology. It's an important step in sort of regaining control over the technology. And it sets an important precedent. We're probably going to see other sectors in the entertainment industry follow suit. We know that voice actors and motion capture uh, actors are also on strike now over this very issue. This case will probably help settle that case as well. And eventually everyone in the entertain entertainment industry will likely follow suit. All right. Meantime, Carmi, the U.S. Justice Department is considering breaking up Google after a judge ruled that they have illegally monopolized the online search market. Do you think that this could happen? And has Google, has it become just too big and too powerful? I don't think it's likely in the near term this court case is probably going to take years to play out. But just the fact that it's hanging over the company like a sort of Damocles, I think, sends a message to the technology industry in general and Google uh, in specifically that the way you do business needs to change. And so I think that, you know, there is history, there's historic precedent here. Uh, we know full well AT&T was, was broken up in 1982, also based on U.S. government action. And Microsoft, in fact, in 2000, was ordered to be broken up, which they eventually 
actually reversed on appeal. So the government's getting serious about reining these companies in. Have they become too powerful? Google has 91% search engine market share. And the next biggest is Microsoft's Bing, which is under 4%. They pay Apple every year $20 billion to have the default search position on iPhones and other devices. Samsung gets $8 billion over four years. So they're essentially crowding everyone out just by writing really big checks. So you know, ultimately, yeah, this is a, a monopolistic behavior. The courts have already ruled that that's the case. Uh, and, and this will move the industry in a different direction. Will they be broken up? I don't think so. But it might make them a little bit more conciliatory to behaving in a better way that is a little bit more, let's say, open to allowing competitors into the space and allowing you and me to have more choice. Hmm, okay. Uh, finally, Carmi Calgary, just the latest North American city to address a rise in fake parking tickets. What more can you tell us about this? This is a scary one, Carolyn. You show up at your car, there's a parking ticket there, you're upset already, you just want to get rid of it, and you, you there's a web address on it, so you sign into the web address, you pay for it, only to realize that wasn't a legitimate website, uh, that was a scam. They now have your personal information, they have your financial information, they're emptying your account as we speak, and they're using that data to launch additional identity theft attacks. Uh, this is happening uh, both with parking tickets, it's happening with parking services, it's happening at restaurants with menus where fake uh, URLs or web addresses and fake QR codes, those barcode-like uh, images uh, are being inserted into the process. And so, you know, when you get a ticket or when you see a code like this, lean in very closely, make sure that it's legitimate. If you're not sure, visit the website of the parking authority directly. Don't follow that link home. Look it up on Google, sign in directly. You'll realize it was a scam. All right, some good advice as always. Tech expert Carmi Levy with us this morning. Carmi, appreciate this as always. Thanks so much. Great being with you guys. Thanks.